especially if you've been showing property. So let's say I just show property until eight o'clock. Now I got to come home, do some offers. And I got to, I haven't been looking at my emails all day. So I've got to go catch up. Oh, the title needed. Um, they didn't get amendment too. Let me send that. Oh, I got to, the lender is uh, conditions. They're asking for exhibit A, you know, whatever, you know, but you have a TC that should be getting copied on all of these. And they've already, if you had a TC, that stuff would have already been done. And so what that does is allows the agent to focus more on income producing activities. The agent is still going to have to be an agent. They still have to nurture their client. They still have to negotiate repairs and negotiate on the client's behalf. Um, there are still things that may be, you know, that I'm copying them on that they may need to do themselves or escalate themselves. But I'm telling you that the time that it free, that that's why the name of my company is Time Freedom. I'm offering time freedom to agents. Um, you know, the amount of time that they're going to be saving can be better used to get that next client. Because if not, you're doing all the paperwork and focus on the clients that are right in front of you that are closing. What happens when all of your clients for the month have, has closed? Now you got to start the hunting all over again because you didn't have time to do that. You are listening to the Real Estate Proverbs podcast with host Kevin Jefferson. This is the number one podcast for African-American real estate professionals who are doing extraordinary things. It's time to tune in. And now your host, the people's lender, Kevin Jefferson. Kevin Jefferson. Welcome to the Real Estate Proverbs podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Jefferson. And today we have a special guest by Mrs. the name of Mrs. Courtney Rozier. How are you doing, Courtney? I'm great. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. For those who don't know who you are, please uh, let us know who you are. Great. So I am Courtney Rozier. I'm a licensed realtor in the Atlanta, Georgia market. Um, and I also am the founder of a contract to close company called Time Freedom TC. Um, and I also um, am the founder of the TC Playbook, which is training for women that aspire to own their own TC business as well. Just women? No men? <laughs> well, no, it's not just women. However, women are my niche. As you know, the riches are in the niches. So right. my target is women because I'm a woman. Um, and some of the reason why it was so important for me to um, launch my training program is because there were some unique situations when we had the pandemic that a lot of um, women and men dealt with. But one of the things being logistics, you know, of, of you know, when the schools decided to shut down with no notice last year, um, I didn't have a care in the world about logistics for my kids. I have a company that allows me to work from anywhere, um, newborn proof, baby proof homeschool proof, you know, I'm able to do it. So it's just, it, it appeals to women um, <laughs> uh, for some of the, the set of circumstances that a lot of women encounter. Gotcha. Gotcha. Cool. So let's, where are you originally from? I'm originally from Chicago. The shy. I am, yeah, I'm, I guess you could say I'm a, I'm a nectarine. <laughs> I've, been, I've been in Atlanta. <laughs> For 20 years, it'll be 21 years in December. So I have been here a long time. Um, but, you know, I'm always going to represent Chicago as well. Gotcha, <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. So prior to when did you start your business? Which one? The transaction coordinating business. Okay. So I officially launched Time Freedom TC in 2018. However, I started my TC business kind of on accident. Um, I became I became a licensed realtor in 2015, um, and I decided to go into real estate sales because I had been in corporate America. Um, and my kids at the time, I have a set of twins. They were um, going to be starting pre-K that following year. 
And I had only been back to work like a year. I had um, stayed home with them until they were almost two years old, went back to work finally, got there, and I was no longer the corporate bay that I had been in previous years. You know, I was the corporate darling, if you will. <laughs> um, you know, I was the one, the boss come in from out of town, you know, want to have dinners, dinner on the boss or drinks and, you know, big group of people. I'm the one that was always able to be there. I was the one always able to stay late for budget season. I worked in commercial real estate as a property manager. Um, so, you know, and I, I was moving up in the ranks. So I thought I, you know, I really loved my career. But after I had kids, um, I had changed, you know, I no longer gave a damn about <laughs> moving up and making more money. I was more interested in the intangible things like being available for my family, um, you know, being able to be there for my kids if they were sick or whatever reason for field trips without guilt. Um, so after that first year, I started, I began to brainstorm on what can I do that's more flexible? You know, I had a plan, like a five-year plan to at least work from home three days a week. I remember posting that on Facebook. Um, and I have the receipts to prove it. <laughs> I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a full oversharer on social. So okay. you know, I have those things. And so, you know, I decided to get licensed. And when I got licensed, I thought that realtors took winters off. They worked really hard in the spring and summer had winters off. I, I had this idealistic view of <laughs> the work involved. Um, and being a realtor. And I got into it, loved it. Had I got into it in my 20s, it would have been on and popping. But again, I got into it for the flexibility to, to what? To be there for my kids. That was my why. I was gone more as a realtor than I was obviously as a corporate bay. So, you know, and I've had, I had the opportunity to be around some really heavy hitters here in Atlanta one being my mentor that actually gave me the seed to become a TC. Um, and, you know, it's easy to get caught up in, you know, oh, these are top producing agents. They making 300,000 and up. It's not even just six figures. It's like, you know, I want that. But I had to step back and realize that that's not the station in my life, you know? So I created this opportunity as a TC, my mentor, as she was mentoring me and training me, we realized that I really took a liking to the contract to close process, the contracts. You know, I'm a Virgo. I tend to be very analytical. I like predictability, um, black and white procedural stuff. And so as we got into that, she naturally started to pay me to do her transaction coordinating. And this is before we even knew that that was an opportunity, that that was actually a, a position. She just started paying me to do it. Um, so that happened in like 2015. And so, like I said, I formally started the business in 2018, meaning open it up to other clients, actually legitimize my business and things like that. But I've been doing it since 2015. So that was long story long. <laughs> that is how long I've had my business. Um, and I still practice real estate as well. Gotcha. So how do I want to unpack it, right? Um, <laughs> Why, why not try to pursue the real estate business more? Mm -hmm. Because most people would seemingly like the ability to make the $300,000. Absolutely. So what I, was it that kept you from pursuing that? It was my why. My why, again, was to be available. Um, so as a realtor, if you want to make that kind of money, you need to, you know, for a while work weekends. I mean, now you can, you can hire people to help you with, with things, but you know, it, you, you don't have the time, um, that you think you have, um, you have more time away from, from home. I didn't want to be away from home. Um, so for me, it was identifying my why and staying focused on that, not focused on the, the next big shiny thing, which is to, you know, go hard um, in a real estate space. 
that wasn't, that's not my space right now. Now I do um, have goals in real estate sales. So I work mainly referral based. So I refer people. I like to refer services out in other states to people. I like to make money that way. Um, and I like to just work with um, sphere of influence, people that know, like, and trust me from social, um, you know, that relate to me on social. They'll call me to handle their real estate needs or refer me out to their friends and family. I don't really like to go out and try to, you know, get cold leads. And, you know, I'm not trying to be everywhere. <laughs> um, I don't even want to get dressed every day. Like, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> So it just depends on your why and, you know, your, your main strengths. Um, you know, this is, this gives me the ability to be home when my kids get home or work around. I, I have a, I have a business that um, revolves around my life. My life doesn't revolve around my work. Wow. So before we go too far, what is the definition of a transaction coordinator? Great. So a transaction coordinator or TC for short, um, basically assists a real estate agent in the day to day um, requirements that it takes to get from contract to close. So from contract to close is going to be about 30 days, um, 30 to 45 days, depending on your market, et cetera. Um, so a transaction coordinator is going to help the realtor stay on top of their broker compliance. Um, they're going to make sure that the realtor gets paid. Our main job is to get ahead of anything that can delay or derail a transaction. So no matter what market you're in, when you receive a contract, it's going to have specific milestones or timelines outlined in that contract. So it's the TC's job to work with the agent to make sure that we are staying in front of those timelines um, to get things done. So we're like orchestrating this beautiful dance um, <laughs> between all parties. So we work with the lender, the title company, or the closing attorney, depending on the market, the co-op agent, the agent. We're making sure if the contract stipulates repairs, do five days before closing. Five days before closing, we're reaching out about those repairs to get those receipts if that's the stipulation in the contract. So we're adhering to the contract um, to get ahead of anything. And, you know, most agents like to get paid at closing. So to me, that's my second main job, you know, besides making sure things are going smooth, also to make sure that we do what we need to do for the broker in order for them to submit that pay at close to the title company so that my agent can get paid and therefore I can get paid. Gotcha. So how, how much time do you think you put into each contract? I would say that overall, we save an agent between 10 and 15 hours per transaction, depending on their broker requirements, their state requirements, because I don't only work in Georgia. I have I accept clients nationwide. So every broker, every market is going to be different. But on average, I would say anywhere between 10 and 15 hours per transaction. So that's pretty major. That's a lot of time. Yeah. Now that's I'm not saying that's how much we spend. But that's what you say. Them. That's what you say because we have it down to a science on, you know, how to track these things um, in an easy way um, so that uh, obviously we can do that for more than one agent, you know? Gotcha. So when you say we, um, how many people are on your team? I currently just have an assistant. Okay. Uh, you know, eventually I would like to grow into an agency where I have other TCs that work with me um, and that sort of thing. But right now I'm pretty much a one woman show with an assistant that helps me, you know, onboard my clients. But I'm in my files pretty much every day. On average, uh, how many files do you think you, you uh, guys handle in a month? In a month, we can average anywhere from 30 to 60 files. Wow. Yeah. 20 on the lower end. Um, so it is a very, uh, it can be a very lucrative. Um, like I, I do feel like I'm getting to the point to where I would like to hire. Um, you know, just haven't gotten there yet. Gotcha. 
So in terms of the transaction coordinating business, how do you get paid? Great question. So um, the TC gets paid. I personally um, get paid by, I invoice my clients after the closing. Um, So once the closing happens, we request the final settlement statement, upload it to their broker compliance, because that's a compliance requirement, no matter where you are. Um, And once, so that is how I complete the file. Once I've done that, I send an invoice and I do that because I've grown to a point to where I need to be able to track my expenses. I pay high tax, you know, your taxes, your self-employed. So prior to that, though, I used to, and some some TCs still do this, we can also get paid um, at closing as well. We can put our fee on the pay at close. Um, or on a settlement statement and have the attorney cut our check as well and then have them mail it to us or have the agent deposit. I used to have my agents deposit it into my account after closing. Um, However, that wasn't working for me personally in my business. (laughs) Um, You know, it, it just, I'd rather you be able to pay electronically and it's in my accounting system and I'm able to track my uh, payments that way. Wow. So no cash app in you, huh? <laughs> no. Don't no. me with these new cash app rules either. <laughs> um, no, I, I don't. I mean, I, I have like one offs because I also, we also offer. So the contract to close is our signature flagship. Okay. Offer. But, you know, I do offer listing input. Um, so we, we input listings for clients, um, in both for the Georgia market in both the Georgia MLS and the FMLS, we handle the the descriptions, we upload the photos in order that makes sense. You know, like we, we do everything for them. So that's a kind of an add on service. And so sometimes, you know, the client's like, well, you know, can I, you know, can I, I had somebody cash at me last like last week, but I don't like to do that because I'm trying to operate my business as a business, which requires track your income and, you know, um, track your expenses and things like that. Uh, It wasn't always that way, but, you know, you, you try to, you grow, you know, so that's what I'm trying to do. Gotcha. So the listing, inputting the listings is a separate service than the sales contract coordinator, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Right. What does something like the listing side uh, cost? The listing input is $100 a pop. That's payable upon the work being rendered, the service being rendered. Um, So for a lot of agents, that's pennies for for what the value that they're getting. They're not having to spend time, you know, uploading, trying to come up with a description. Although nowadays you can say, you can say anything on the listing nowadays, nobody's caring. Like they just (laughs) want to see the house. Um, But, you know, we still operate at a high, you know, level. So it's, it's something that they find value in. So we do offer that as well. So. And the contract to close that service is $400 per file. And that is only payable if and when we close. So, as you know, um, most markets, you're going to have a due diligence. You might depend in this market. Again, people are doing without, but you're going to the buyer has rights to terminate. Um, So, you know, if we terminate, I don't charge the agent a dime. Even if we terminate after I've done all the work, I don't charge them because it doesn't happen enough. It's a negligible occurrence. So. I don't currently charge for that. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's how that works as well. So the business that you offer, essentially, if the realtor uses your services, should allow for their business to grow because those things are tedious things that keep you up late night, right? Yes, especially if you've been showing property. So let's say... I just show property until eight o'clock. Now I got to come home, do some offers. And I got to, I haven't been looking at my emails all day 
So I've got to go catch up. Oh, the title needed. Um, they didn't get amendment too. Let me send that. Oh, I got to, the lender is uh, conditions. They're asking for exhibit A, you know, whatever, you know, but you have a TC that should be getting copied on all of these. And they've already, if you had a TC, that stuff would have already been done. And so what that does is allows the agent to focus more on income producing activities. The agent is still going to have to be an agent. They still have to nurture their client. They still have to negotiate repairs and negotiate on the client's behalf. Um, there are still things that may be, you know, that I'm copying them on that they may need to do themselves or escalate themselves. But I'm telling you that the time that it free, that that's why the name of my company is Time Freedom. I'm offering time freedom to agents. Um, you know, the amount of time that they're going to be saving can be better used to get that next client. Because if not, you're doing all the paperwork and focus on the clients that are right in front of you that are closing. What happens when all of your clients for the month have, has closed? Now you got to start the hunting all over again because you didn't have time to do that during the contract to close period. So it definitely um, allows them to focus on what they need to focus on if they're looking to scale their business. All right. 2020. Do you know how many transactions you helped close? A lot. <laughs> 2020 <laughs> was not the for, Okay, so let me just say this. For the Atlanta market, Atlanta was closed about two weeks. Realtors were fighting to become essential. If you remember, like it right. was a big deal. It was like, oh no, we're essential. We need to get back out here. My real estate business was one of the best years in 2020. And I'm not even, I'm referral only, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it's like 2020 was great. 2020 was better than 2021, I think. So that was my next question. How are things in 2021? 2021, um, 2021 are, is good. Um, you know, I, I think that we're lucky to be in this market. I'm lucky to serve this market. I feel like the Atlanta market, first of all, I've been here, like I said, since 2000. Before I got my license, I had been thinking about getting my license for a decade because one thing that I noticed when I moved here, when I moved here, everybody was flipping houses. Um, and before the, the crisis and all of that. And I remember noting like, man, everybody named mama got a real estate license here. Like this is like, is it a requisite to get your real estate license when you move to Atlanta? You know, so there are, um, it's a high number of licensed agents here that are actually working agents. So, you know, 2021 is, is no different, but I feel like uh, maybe I'm giving 2020 so much credit because if I feel like it was designed for us to fail, but people overcame it so well. I, I totally understand. So how, how are you growing your business? So I, <laughs> I handle my TC business um, similar to the way that I handle the real estate business. I strive to knock my clients socks off so that they can refer me to other people. <laughs> and that's worked for me. Um, the other thing that I do is I try to add value on my socials, um, you know, so that people can see what I do and, and spark interest that way. Um, also I'm a preferred vendor for, um, for my brokerage. Um, so I try to, you know, reach out to other brokerages to become their preferred vendor. Um, but I really rely a lot on word of mouth as well. And so I tell a lot of my students, like, all you need is one client. Do your absolute, you know, give 110% every time to that one client and they will talk about you and refer you. If you're saving somebody so much time and essentially allowing them to earn more money, like they're going to talk about you. <laughs> so that's kind of what I do. Gotcha. So 
walk me through the process of actually starting the business. Okay, excellent. So the process, I like to run the process down, um, make it more bite-sized. So I like to break it down um, into an acronym, which is a framework that I have called the BLITZ method. Um, So BLITZ, this isn't necessarily in order, but I had to make it make sense. So the TC playbook, let me just say, I came up with the TC playbook, the name. I I know nothing about football, really. But one day I was like, I had my husband come draw on the whiteboard. Like, what does a play look like? Like, you know, draw, I know, you know, draw that. Who does this? Who does that? So I think like the TC is like the wide receiver. So we have that contract that we're trying to defend and trying to run it to the goal. Again, I'm not a football person. So if I get something wrong, don't, you know, don't trip. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> judgment free zone here. Okay, judgment free. So we are guarding that contract. So the agent throws us that contract. We are going down the field, um, you know, several offenses or potential offenses, you know, that we're trying to get past. So we've got to get through due diligence. Due diligence can either keep going or it can be terminated and not and be a false start. <laughs> Got it. I, that's a new one. I didn't even think about false start. So, anyway, <laughs> um, so once we pass the due diligence, okay, due diligence can be anywhere from in this market, three days to in a better market, 10 days at the most. Um, and a due diligence is for those that don't know time frame in which the buyer can terminate for any reason or no reason at all. So obviously the sellers don't love it, but, you know, the buyer does. So we're defending that contract. So once we get past the due diligence period, um, then the lender will want to order the appraisal. Now, the offense there is that appraisal can come in low. Generally, we'll have 21 days or so to get that appraisal back um, and determine whether it's low or not. If it's low, again, that can be a potential offense that we're defending. So if it is low, then the agent will need to go back to the drawing board and see if they can renegotiate the price to the lower appraisal price or see if the buyer wants to add more money, whatever they want to do. So get past the appraisal. Okay. Did the, did the client get their loan commitment? You know, did they lose their job? <laughs> um, you know, we usually have 21 days to get that loan commitment. Um, you know, again, that can be some. That can be an offense. The client can have to terminate, you know, for for a reason regarding the loan. Um, so, those are some of the, the things that we, as a TC, is, are tracking for the agent. Um, we're reminding the lender and the agent of those dates before they arrive. Like, hey, just a reminder: the finance contingency is due, or you know, the loan commitment is due, the appraisal is due. Where are we? You know, we are there to, um, you know, make sure that everybody else is on their job. So we have a lot of tasks, but the majority of those tasks don't require us to do a thing. They're just requiring us to alert and make, you know, alert the parties and make sure that, you know, we are where we need to be. Um, So following all of that, then we have to schedule the closing. You know, that's usually the week before closing. Um, We're working with title. We're making sure that the title is clear. We're making sure that you, the lender, has requested the title. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, I I asked the title about um, whether the title is clear. They're like, well, the lender hasn't requested title. (laughs) So then I go back and say, Kevin, where's the title? You know, (laughs) or where's the title request? Um, so just things like that. We're orchestrating everything um, from contract to close that's within that contract. We're not assistants. We are TCs. Um, so we're handling, you know, the assistants help the agent or they're focused on the agent. We're focused on the contract as a TC. I think that I answer that. I feel like you I did. You did. You thing. you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine. You did a good job. You actually walked us through um, the process. Um, 
I've had the experience of working with, uh, not with you directly, but I've had experience of working with transaction coordinators. And I think it's a genius idea, right? You know, while you're right, if you're out showing houses and then in this market, you could show houses from nine to five Mm -hmm. and that amendment needs to get in while I'm working as the lender later. Right. The my operational staff has probably gone home at five and most attorneys probably are not answering emails are probably doing other things. They don't leave us at five like we think they do. Um, So then that doesn't get looked at until the next day. And you miss a day, you miss a lot. Right. You do. You do. And So for me now, we are now when I first started, I was like, oh, I'm available when you are. No. I have boundaries now because what, again, I'm focused on the contract. So like you said, your operations person, the title people, we're working during the confines of nine to six generally where they're requesting stuff. Now I'm still working, but I mean, as far as things that are pressing, that needs to get done during those hours. But we work the same hours as title and processors. Um, You know, we no longer you know, are, are working on the weekends and things like that. Now we do work on the weekends. Don't tell my clients, that. <laughs> but you know, there's nothing that's going to be pressing regarding the contract on the weekend is the point. Right. Yeah. That's the, that's the key point. So what, what would be the first thing you would tell someone who's aspiring to be a transaction coordinator? What would be one of the first things you would tell them to do to get the business started? I would say learn um, the contract to close process backwards and forwards. Every state is going to have a different, um, you know, different requirements. I'm not licensed in every state. I'm only licensed in Georgia, but I can pick up Texas, a Texas contract and know because I know the contract to close process and I know what I'm need- needing to track, then I'm comfortable marketing to those agents there. I'm comfortable handling their contracts. Um, so understand the contract to close process. Um, branding is not as important as the knowledge that you need and marketing. Um, you know, and by marketing, I mean, you know, not spend another piece of advice is don't spend so much time worried about your logo and your branding. You know how many times I changed colors, logos, and you know, like, and nobody even really care. I mean, if you're not Nike, like, you know, we're TCs, you're not gonna, I mean, you may be on the first, I mean, I, I do have a reputation. I feel like a good reputation in my local market. Um, just as me personally, but people put so much stock in that. And I think that they do that because they feel that that is the exciting part or the easy part or whatever. You got to focus on the knowledge, knowing the process, because you need to know that process to have the confidence to hold discovery calls with agents and to have conviction about the things that you offer and to understand that you're not selling. You're just telling somebody how you can make their life easier. But in order to have the confidence to do that, you have to understand what you're actually, what transformation you're actually able to give them. Got you. So if someone is not in real estate and doesn't hold a license, right, but they want to start a transaction coordinator business, how do they learn the closing process? Well, they can learn it from my course, the TC Playbook. Um, <laughs> the TC Playbook, this is, I, this is how, how I know I went off on a tangent because I was going to tell you about the, the framework. Okay. So the framework um, blitz comes from football, um, but the framework is blitz. So it's branding, legitimize. So you need to brand your business, legitimize your business, um, work on your mindset, I call it imagine imagination slash mindset because obviously I needed an eye to make right. it, but really mindset, the mindset gives you that confidence um, to talk to people and, and know that you're offering them something. You're not selling them on anything. Um, so understanding um, 
that you have to have the mindset, regardless of what business you're trying to launch, you have to have, you know, many people are, are transitioning from corporate America, like I was to owning their own business or trans, you know, transitioning from being a stay at home parent to owning your own business. There are mindset shifts that you have to have in order for the success to come, you know? Um, so imagination, then the T is techniques. So that's when we get into the nitty gritty. So we go over real legitimate contracts, highlight how to count the days. Um, Cause every market doesn't matter what market they count the days pretty similarly, you know, day one is a certain time, you know, it's a certain science to counting the days that are in those contracts so that you know when those contingency periods expire. Um, understanding the why and the mechanics behind what the agents are doing for the clients to get them to the closing table and how you're assisting them. Um, so all of that, um, we go over in the techniques module and then, um, S is for systems. So every system, oh, and techniques, I also have um, access to every template that I use. I have emails that I send out for every part of the contract. So, you know, I have an intro email. I have um, an email to the lenders asking specific questions. Never ask them general questions. Ask them specifically, have you uh, ordered the appraisal? When is it due back? Like, you know, don't just say, Hey, I want to get an update on appraisal. They'll never, you'll never answer me, will you? <laughs> you might, you might not. So ask specific questions. Um, and then systems, we go over my entire life cycle from attracting, I, we go over my client attraction system. I call it, um, you know, establishing your cast, your, your client attraction system. Um, and, you know, from getting the client, from your discovery call, I have actual um, copies of my discovery calls live, how they, how I, you know, the flow of the call, because again, that's what's going to build the confidence if you know, like, oh, well, what do, what do I say? You know, like you said, I'm not a salesperson. So what do you say? So they'll learn all of that. Um, and then, you know, how to, you know, I have a system for um, which you use when you reached out to me, I have a system for, you know, you don't just call me, you know, you, you set a schedule, a time so that I can focus on you, you know, when we have our call. Um, so I have a system for how clients can get in touch with me. Um, I have a system for nurturing the client. Once they become a client, I have a system for onboarding the client. Once they send me a contract, then we have the system for the actual contract. So they'll have access to all of my checklists that I use to keep track of a contract. Currently, I use a software for keeping track of my contracts, obviously, because I, I you know, oversee a lot of them now. But I would say my first couple of years, like working with, you know, 10 to 15, for my first year or so, 10 to 15 um, deals at a time, I was still using paper checklists. So it's a very low head, low overhead business to start. Um, once you, you know, get your, obviously you want to invest in education um, of how to do it. But as far as starting your business, I go over free stuff and I go over low to moderately cost um, systems, you know, that you can use to make things easier. Wow. <laughs> wow. So in terms of, I've got my system set up, Courtney, right? Mm-hmm. I've got my logo done, got my right. slogan, I'm branded. How yeah. do I get that first client? So I always say for any business, this is what they tell you in real estate, sphere of influence. You and everybody you know, no realtors. You may know, you might know somebody that's an attorney that's in real estate. You might know real estate investors. You know some, you know people in real estate. Go to them first. They already know, like, and trust you. So go to them first. Um, in addition, um, you can do direct email marketing, direct DM marketing. You know, I go over, I have templates of how to present your services um, and how to create graphics, you know, to make people look at it, you know. 
um, that you can send to people and just say, hey, if you if you need a TC, like keep things short and sweet, but the the also the money is in the follow up. So you can't just do it one time. An example of that is yesterday or a couple of times, a young lady had texted me out the blue, like, hey, I help um, I work with NAR, which is the National Association of Realtors, and I help realtors with their health insurance. And so, you know, open enrollment is coming. I never talked to this lady, right? And so I was ignoring her, like, no thanks. You know, I don't think I said no thanks yet, but today, so I ignored her. Today she sent it and I was getting ready to text no thanks. And then I looked at my $1,400 health insurance bill and I said, go ahead and send it. Cause she was like, well, I can see if I'm, I'm sure you don't have time. Cause I reached out a couple of times. You didn't respond. I, I'm sure you probably didn't have time, but would you like for me to send you the price? You know, if you just tell me your age, your family age or whatever, I can send you price. I was going to say no, but this time something made me say yes. And now I'm getting ready to transfer. She's saving me. I'm paying half <laughs> with her. So the point is follow up. If somebody ignored you or, you know, whatever, it may not have been the right time. I'm not saying be a bugaboo, but I'm saying offer value. So, you know, it's not always. So it may be, here's my services, but maybe on, if you're big on social, if you're a social media person, offer value. What I just talked about with the contract to close process, do a reel about that. I've done that. I get a lot of eyes on it, you know? Um, and it's not about how many comments you get. It's not about, you know, how many likes you get. It's about how many views you got. And that's something that I had to realize as well. Like, you nobody liking my stuff, but people are seeing it and you'll be surprised. People will DM you or call you or private message you when the time is right. So you have to not give up and, um, you know, and follow up. Oh, another thing, another thing you can do. Um, everything doesn't have to be on social media. I'm an introvert, so that's my preferred way. I don't really do a lot of networking events, but I have a, a, someone in my private group. I have a free group on Facebook called the Work From Anywhere Movement, and it's a, a free group for aspiring TCs. And I had a young lady on there. She's like, oh, my God. I, I had asked a question about what they, what goals did they accomplish or something. And she's like, I finally got my business cards done. And they didn't come out at, at how I wanted them at all. They look horrible. And I'm doing this networking event in two days. And I don't even have any business cards. I said, let me give you a tip. I can't remember. I don't even know where a box of my business cards are. I never pass out business cards because... You passing your business cards gives you no control over communicating with that person. So what I do is, which I am, I am kind of green. Like I don't like having a lot of paper and all that. So I say, you know what? I'm, I'm a green, I'm green. I don't have um, business cards. I have an electronic card. Why don't you give me your number so I can send you my card and we'll have each other's information. So now you have a person that you can put in your database. Um, you know, because I know when people give me cards, if I ever needed their service, I wouldn't know where their card was, you know? So those are just a couple of ways that you can get, um, clients in this market. It's not, it's not rocket science. It's not hard because you're not, again, you're not selling anything. You're giving agents what they need. A lot of agents see the value in it. So it's not a hard sale. Wow. So if you gave all of that, imagine what someone could get in your playbook. Exactly. You've given a lot of, I mean, you've given a lot of great information. Um, so who is the transaction coordinating coordinator business good for, right? Like, can yeah. someone do it part-time? What, what yeah. are your thoughts on that? So the, the transaction coordinator business is good for any I call them real estate enthusiasts, people that um, you, I have students that purchased a home and was like, you know what, I, you know, I really like the process. I would be interested in learning more. Um, anybody that is looking for a work from anywhere opportunity um, and just want it, or anyone that wants to get their foot in the door in real estate, but, you know, 
don't necessarily want to sell homes or don't necessarily want to take the test or whatever the case. It's good for them. Um, and who else? you were asking, um, oh, part time. So I've had students who had full time jobs in a completely opposite or unrelated field. Obviously, 2020, many people are working from home. Um, and when I tell you after less in less than 60 days, she was working on 43 deals. She had 11 clients. So I, before I would say like, mm -mm. you know, I'm, I'm also a realtor. I'm like, you can't do, you either in or you out. You can't, you know, <laughs> but I, I stand corrected. You absolutely can um, do it at the same time as something else, but you need to have a flexible job. Like you have to be able to keep your eyes. I don't know if you can get another monitor or something where you can have your TC emails up, you know, you have to, it, it's going to take some arranging of your systems and things like that to make it work, but it's doable. You know, you don't have to get into this business to make six figures. You know, you can get into this business, get one client, you know, close five a month, $2,000 a month. That's not too, too shabby. No, <laughs> no, it's not. I mean, 500 no. to a thousand extra dollars changes a lot of people's worlds, That's changes right. their finances a lot. Wow. So tell us a little bit about your class that you host. So you're talking about the master class. Master class, yes. Yeah. So I am doing a master class on November 4th um, at 8 p.m. Eastern. And in it, I will be going over kind of what we just talked about, how to be um, booked and busy, a uh, booked and busy TC, um, you know, but you have to, again, everything that I pretty much talked about today, I'm going to be talking about more in detail. So you have to have um, mindset talk. You have to have an attraction talk, which is what we talk about, processes and systems. That's my MAPS procedure. So mindset, attraction, processes, and systems. So we'll go over more in detail um, some of the things um, that I've learned along the way and what I did to start my business and grow it and launch it, like, you know, and be in six figures my first year. Again, think twice about if you want to be in six figures or not, <laughs> because, you know, you will, you know, if you want something that is, you know, where you can do it and not feel like you're working a whole, whole, whole lot, um, you know, then you don't have to, you know, be trying to get six figures and beyond, you know? Um, so anyway, that's kind of what the class will be about. Um, it's a master class. It's about an hour long. Um, and I will be um, discussing at the end, at the very end, um, how you can work with me directly um, if you're interested in launching your TC business and actually growing one. Got you. So I know you said that you started it and we're going back to the beginning because I just thought of something. <laughs> right. I know sure. you said that you started it based off transactions with your mentor. Was your mentor TC or were they a realtor? They were a realtor. So, you know, I got my license and my mentor was a, a top producing agent um, at the time. So. If I'm the type of person I go all into research mode when I get an idea about something that I want to do. So before I even got my license, because I love social media, <laughs> I hashtagged Atlanta real estate, Atlanta real estate agent. Who's working? Let me see who's out here working. So this particular young lady, um, we actually shared the same um, hairstylist. So I'm like, oh, I got an in. OK, let me call Keisha. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I reached out. And so it just so happened again, timing, you know, because I've seen how many people um, my mentor has had to turn down before just because she didn't have the capacity to, you know, be somebody's mentor. But timing was right. It was Memorial Day. 
you know, we had been kind of playing phone tag talking, but she was going out of town and she needed somebody to open doors, you know? So that's kind of how I kind of got to know her. Um, and so she was a, a top producing agent. And so she was just, you know, I would shadow her and, um, you know, but I was most interested in the contracts. Like, you know, how does this work? Why do we do this? What, you know, uh, what are the strategies used to protect the buyer? What are the strategies used, you know, to protect the seller if I'm working on that side? You know what I mean? Um, so that is kind of how that kind of, it, it kind of grew from there. Um, and she's still my client to this day. Wow. So <laughs> how did you, how did you learn to grow the system? trial and error. Um, so once I, so I worked with her, um, you know, her and her only from 2015 to 2017, I think 2018, I got serious and, you know, got a bank account and LLC and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so I, um, in working with her just realized that I needed to, I, I was able to kind of research and kind of see some things that other TCs were doing. So like there was a whole new world open. I don't know how I found out the name, but I saw it somewhere. I'm like, this is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, when I decided to um, get serious about it, it's just, I know what, what I like to see as a consumer. So I like, I, I, think that you're more credible if you have a way for me to reach you, um, you know, like the scheduler, you know, I feel like that's more, I don't know, because I, I don't really want to call you out the blue. Most people aren't comfortable calling a new contact like, hey, you know, just out the blue, because most people are busy, you know, right. so I like scheduler. So that kind of came up on my own part. And a lot of it was also stems from real estate, owning a real estate business as well. You know, there's a lot of information out there on systems for real estate. So it's really not super different. And then as far as the LLC, you know, part of my course, you can find all of this stuff on your own. I don't know how long it's going to take the person to, you know, it took me a while, you know, to, to come up with the steps and, you know, I made some mistakes, you know, and things like that. So anybody could just like um, the transaction coordinating any agent can do their own transactions we've all done it you know but it's about you know where do you where do you want to see yourself in your business how can this help you grow um so you know again with this the information that i'm sharing isn't like some patented information on how to start a business you can find it but do you want it all in one place Along with, which I didn't mention, the TC playbook is more than just the course. So the course is self-led, so they're pre-recorded modules. However, we also have a private members-only group where my students ask questions all day and all night <laughs> <laughs> that I'm available to answer. So I can't do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I don't have time to do that. But I can, I'm in, I, I can do Facebook and work at the same time. So, you know, if somebody has a question, I can answer that. Then we have a monthly call um, the first Wednesday of every month where we talk about a specific subject and you know, we go over their wins, their challenges. Um, and then I teach about a specific subject that's not necessarily in the modules. Like I touch on you know, that you have to get the settlement statement at the, at the end. But my monthly class, we may dive into that. Like, here's a settlement statement. You're not the agent. So you don't need to, you know, you don't need to do too much, but you definitely need to see if the contract said that there was a buyer credit that the seller was paying, you got to make sure that's on there. If you had to order a home warranty, you got to make sure that's on there. Got to make sure the sales price is right. And you got to make sure that commission is right. That's what you're looking at. So I can show you one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting what that is. So we have like many trainings and things like that. So it's not just the course. You have access to me, just not necessarily where you can call me anytime, but you will get your questions answered. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's really, to me, 
more than anything, that's really, that's what you're paying for. Right. The you know, most value. You need to learn the stuff, but to know that you have a team behind you. So like when you get your, like my, my students have gotten their first clients and, you know, they felt comfortable in doing that without knowing every single thing because they knew that they had a team, whatever they don't know, they can tell their clients, like, you know, if the client knows that they're new, yeah, I might, I'm new, but I have a whole team, you know, that can help me if, if there's something that I need help with or whatever, you know what I mean? So it gives them that confidence. Wow. So Courtney, this has been amazing. It's been eye opening. Um, as to what your business was and i saw you online that's how i saw <laughs> what you did right probably on the real yep real. it was on the real it was <laughs> on the real it was on the real so for anyone who's interested in using your services how can they get in contact with you great question so um the easiest way would probably be to um you can either find me um, on Instagram at Time Freedom TC. You can go to my website, www.timefreedomtc.com. Um, from both of those locations, you can schedule um, some time for a 10 to 15 minute chat to make sure we are a good fit because we're not a good fit for all agents. <laughs> we have everybody, you know, some agents, um, they're not ready to hand those kind of things over yet. And that's fine, you know, but you can kind of you can kind of have that conversation and see that see if it will be a good fit. Um, so that's how you can find me for that. Awesome. And what if someone wants to start a TC business and they want to take part in a master class? Yes. Um, so the um, you can find me on www.thetcplaybook.com um, and there should be a link to the master class there. You can also follow me on Instagram at the Courtney Rosier. The link is there. Or you can find me on Instagram at the Work From Anywhere Movement um, as well. And the link is there. And there's also a um, way for you to join my Facebook group, which is um, if you, I think you can find it directly on Facebook. It's um, the Work From Anywhere Movement. Awesome. That's a Courtney. lot. <laughs> it is. It is. We'll have links in the show notes. We'll get links from you so they can just click on the links and go to uh, to access you. Um, Courtney, I appreciate your time. Thank you. This has been amazing. I definitely would like to come back and dig a little deeper. But for time constraints that we scheduled, um, I definitely appreciate it. And you have a good one. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for watching the Real Estate Proverbs podcast with Kevin Jefferson. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when the latest video drops.